This is why parents should believe their kids. In 2010, a 15-year-old boy started to notice that the door to his attic, which was in his bedroom, was always open. One day, when his mom's giving him a hard time about being lazy, he's like, well, you're one to talk. You always leave my attic door open. She's like, I haven't touched your attic door in months, and nobody else has either. Not easily frightened, the boy decides to leave the attic door open. And so he's laying in bed, and he kind of looks over at the door, and standing in the door frame is a figure staring right at him. He bolts, tells his parents, they don't believe him, and then six months later, they move anyway. A few years later, the boy discovers his favorite teacher actually moved into his old house. And so he jokingly asks her, you ever see any ghosts walking around your attic? Her face got completely serious, and she's like, you know, as soon as we moved in, the door to the attic kept opening. So we investigated, and we found a trap door that led onto the roof. Someone had been crawling in through that entrance and living in the attic for years. This is why you should always be afraid of Australia. In 2014, an eight-year-old and her family went on an extended vacation to, you guessed it, Australia. After a couple of days, she started having this horrible recurring nightmare where an alien would appear in her room and try to grab her with its tentacle. After a week of this, she is terrified to go to sleep, but her parents keep telling her that it's just her overactive imagination. One night, she swears she feels that thing grab her leg and she leaps from the bed screaming. Her family runs into the room and they see her hysterical in the corner. And then they look at the bed and they all gasp. It wasn't an alien. It was a seven foot long adult carpet python that had been sneaking in through the ceiling tile and into her bed to stay warm every night. Yes, the picture at the end is real. In 1876, a woman from a very prominent family in Paris goes missing. After years go by and no one has a clue what happened to this woman, friends and family ultimately mourn her death and move on. 25 years later, and this anonymous letter shows up on the Attorney General's desk, claiming that the missing woman's family had a secret. Intrigued by the letter, the police go to the family's home, show it to them, and ask to search the property, to which they say, go for it. They search, they don't find anything, but on the way out, they notice something very peculiar. At the end of some stairs was a door that was padlocked shut. When the family refused to open it, the police break it down and make a horrifying discovery. Cowering on a rotten straw mattress in a pitch black room was the missing woman, now 50 years old and extremely malnourished. Her mother had imprisoned her there after they had fought over her boyfriend, and she had not seen sunlight or another human being in 25 years. Don't read the comments, it will spoil the very satisfying ending. In 1999, a 20-year-old kid was obsessed with this 16-year-old girl, but she wasn't into him. Frustrated, he breaks into her house and demands that she dates him. When she refuses, he kills her. And then he kills her 14-year-old sister too. Or so he thought. The 14-year-old survived and easily identified Paul Powell as the killer. Powell showed no remorse in court and even called the victim stupid. When he was sentenced to death, though, his attitude changed and he cried and begged for mercy. And unfortunately, mercy would come in the form of a legal loophole that switched his death sentence to a life sentence. Believing he was saved from the death penalty because of double jeopardy, he wrote this ridiculous letter to the prosecuting attorney, basically admitting to every single detail of the crime, kind of bragging about what he got away with. So the attorney just takes the letter, gives it to a judge. The judge looks at it and says, yep, there's new evidence here, orders a new trial, and immediately this dude is resentenced to death. And a few months later, this lowlife was executed. This is why you should always trust your gut. In the early 1970s, a college student decided to hitchhike his way home after class. A car pulls up, a man offers him a ride, and he climbs in. As soon as the car started moving, the student felt totally uneasy, like something was wrong, but he couldn't quite place it. Without saying anything, he waited till the next time they slowed down, and he flung the door open and ran away. Two years later, he's flicking through TV channels when he comes across this special interview with a death row inmate, and it's just the audio recording, so he hears the interviewer ask the inmate, why did you remove all the door handles inside of your car? The man just goes, well, the first time I tried to kill someone, I picked up a college hitchhiker who got smart at some point and jumped out of my car. So, lesson learned, remove all the door handles. When they showed his picture, the student knew immediately that he was supposed to be the first victim of John Wayne Gacy, AKA the killer clown who had killed over 30 men and boys in his clown room and stuffed them into his basement. This is why you should always look under the toilet seat before you sit down. In 2003, over a five day period in London, three women showed up to hospitals with the same mysterious symptoms. 
They say they woke up with these horrible bite marks on the backs of their legs, and then while they're at the hospital, they become paralyzed and die. Despite their similar symptoms, the women had nothing in common except that they had recently been to the same pub. Authorities immediately shut it down and do a thorough search inside of the pub, but can't find anything deadly until one of the detectives goes to use the pub's bathroom. As he's about to sit down, he thinks he sees something moving in the toilet, so he gives it a little kick. Hiding in the toilet was one of the world's largest and most poisonous spiders, the Brazilian wandering spider, and now they needed to catch it. This is why you should never talk to strangers. In the early 2000s, a young girl was waiting outside her friend's house, peeling the bark off of a tree, when a strange man approaches her. As he got closer, she could see that he was grinning ear to ear and his face was white as a ghost. He walks right up to her and pinches her on the arm and says, how would you like it if I peeled your skin off? Just then, her friend's mom yells for her to come inside and the man walks away. It would be years before the girl's mother would finally tell her who this man really was. Her friend's mom had seen the man pinch her on the arm and had immediately called the police, who quickly rounded this guy up. Plastered all across the inside of his van were dozens of pictures of this girl, but what they found in his storage locker is straight out of a nightmare. In the locker was a chair with hand and arm restraints, next to it was an anatomy book and hundreds of torture tools. This is why you might not want to eat deer meat. In late 2019, a man and his grandfather were out hunting when they spotted something way off in the distance that just didn't seem right. A deer was howling and then lowering its antlers and charging forward like a battering ram as if it was fighting with another animal. But when they crept closer, they could tell that the deer was all alone and something was definitely wrong with it. The deer was repeatedly ramming its head into a tree and then finally one of its antlers breaks off and it kneels down and starts chewing on the antler. As they're watching in horror, the deer in a sudden lurching movement gets up on its hind legs and then walks like a human into the nearby lake, goes under and does not resurface. Turns out the deer had chronic wasting disease, which is a new, highly contagious neurological disorder that drills holes in the brains of those affected and leads to a distinct lack of fear and awareness and is always fatal. And now, scientists are concerned it might spread to humans in 2020. This is why you should follow me on YouTube and Instagram. So apparently, TikTok might actually get banned in the US. I just thought it was a headline, but it's proving to be something far more serious and it might actually happen. But don't worry, if you've grown to like my scary content, I'm gonna keep on posting it. But I'm gonna do it on my YouTube channel, Mr. Ballin, where I've already posted like 30 videos. Most of it has never even been on TikTok, so it's new stuff. And my Instagram page, right here. So it's John Ballin 416 I made this before I became Mr. Ballin. And if you get me to 500k subs on YouTube, I'll open the Mr. Ballin store where you can get your flannels and backwards hats, and you can learn how to grow a crappy mustache and wear socks and crocs and short shorts. Peak of fashion stuff, you know what I mean? So if that's interesting to you, let's go to 500k. This is why I'm proud to be an American. In 2014, a team of Navy SEALs were ambushed in broad daylight in a bad town in Afghanistan. They managed to fight off the attack, but by the time the shooting stopped, they were low on supplies and needed to leave. As they coordinated their exit strategy, a drone overhead picked up a group of men hiding in a field near the city's exit. Fearing these might be enemy combatants preparing for another attack, a few of the SEALs stepped aside to go have a better look. As they crept down an alleyway, all hell broke loose when two enemy grenades came hurtling over the wall and detonated at their feet. Two of the SEALs were immediately incapacitated, but luckily their teammates jumped into action, repeatedly exposing themselves to enemy fire in order to save their lives. Without their teammates' bravery that night, those two men could have died. And I know because I was one of those two men. So on this Memorial Day, I am forever grateful to my teammates who saved my life and to the Gold Star families who carry an unthinkable burden. Thank you. This is what they meant when they said, don't talk to strangers. In the early 1900s, a 10 year old boy was playing in the woods when a tall man appeared and asked if he wanted to come back to his cabin for dinner. Totally caught off guard, the boy reluctantly agrees and begins walking. 
When they get to the cabin, the boy is relieved when he sees Paul, a family friend, sitting on the porch, so the boy happily goes inside. After they eat, the boy says thank you to the strange tall man, says bye to Paul, and then he leaves. He had only walked a few steps when he sees his family, along with Paul, running up the path towards him, frantically asking if he was okay. Confused, the boy says, I'm just fine, and he looks at Paul and he's like, why didn't you tell them I was with you at, at the cabin? And he points over his shoulder. Paul glances over the boy's shoulder and then narrows his eyes and says, you were kidnapped by a cult three days ago. No one's seen you. Terrified, the boy turns around to look at the cabin he just came from, and it's gone. All he sees is a dark forest that stretches for miles. This is why you should always trust your parents. In 1990, a father and his 15-year-old son worked together at a gas station in Florida. One night, the boy was sitting outside on a break when he saw a crazy-looking woman walking towards the store. They were in a high-crime area, and it was very late, so the boy turns around to look through the glass at his dad to see what he should do. His dad took one look at the woman and just shook his head, no, do not help her. The woman walks up to the boy and says, hey, my car's broken down, can you give me a ride? Before the boy can answer, his dad bursts outside and says, you need to leave here immediately. Angrily, the woman turns and leaves, cussing them both out the whole way. One year later, the boy's in his room at home when his dad calls from the other room and says, you gotta come in here and look at the TV. On the screen was the same woman from the gas station. Better known as Eileen Warnos, she was a serial killer who used to pick up her male victims at gas stations in Florida. She was later put to death. This is why you should never explore abandoned ships. In 2014, the U.S. Navy decided to decommission one of its oldest ships, so it brought it into port to be broken down for scrap. Before workers were allowed to actually start breaking it down, the foreman had to go on board and take pictures of every room. So late one night, the foreman spends about an hour walking through this abandoned ship with a flashlight, taking about 100 pictures. When he was done, he emailed the pictures to his boss, who quickly wrote back, Who's the guy with the axe? The foreman had no idea what he was talking about, but he noticed the boss had attached one of the pictures that he had just sent him. When he opened it, he nearly fainted. There, in the bowels of the ship, poking his head around a corner, was a faceless man wielding an axe. The foreman had spent over an hour in this hallway and never heard or saw this guy. The Navy searched the ship and never found this guy. They also reviewed security footage of the only entrance, and he never entered or left the ship. Everybody thinks this video is fake until they see what's in the vent. In 2018, a group of urban explorers decided to check out this abandoned factory. As soon as they go inside, they see this warning on the wall. They go upstairs anyways and immediately hear voices from the floor above them. Instead of running away like normal people, they go up to have a look. They trace the voices back to this vent, so they think, and they take their camera and they slide it in to have a look. When they review the footage, they can't believe what they found. This is why you should always change your locks. In 2017, a college girl woke up from a nightmare drenched in sweat and decided to rinse off before going back to sleep. She propped her phone on a shelf, turned on some music, and then hopped in the shower. A few minutes later, she reaches for her phone to change the song, but stops suddenly. Reflected on her phone's screen was a person standing in the middle of her bathroom facing the shower. She somehow kept her composure, turned the water to scalding hot, and then ripped open the curtain and sprayed the intruder in the face. As they howled in pain, she ran past them to her kitchen to get her butcher's knife. In a panic, she can't find her knife, so she just runs out of the apartment and calls the police. The police go in and come out with a crazy-looking woman in handcuffs. One of the officers comes over to the girl and says, she used to live here and she had copies of your keys. Then he pauses and looks down and brings up a clear evidence bag that contained her butcher's knife, and he says, looks like she wanted her apartment back. Yes, this really did happen. In 2015, a man woke up to a strange post-it note sitting on his desk. On it was a to-do list that he didn't recognize in handwriting that didn't look like his. Since he was up late the night before doing some work, he assumed he must have written out the list when he was half asleep and kind of forgot about it, so he just crumples it up and throws it away. Two weeks later, he wakes up to dozens of these post-it notes all over his wall, and they're all blank except for one that in the same weird handwriting says, Our landlord isn't letting me talk to you. 
Now feeling totally freaked out that some crazy person is crawling around his apartment at night, he starts looking for signs of a break-in, but there aren't any. Instead of calling the police, he shares his experience on Reddit asking for help, and one user's comment literally saves his life. Turns out the man was writing the notes to himself and then forgetting because his brain was slowly dying due to a carbon monoxide leak that was only discovered because a user suggested he install a detector. This sounds totally made up until you listen to the police report. In the early 90s, a teenage girl started to see these shadowy figures that would come into a room at night and crawl all around her room and even grab at her legs. At the same time, her health began to rapidly deteriorate, which ultimately led to her death, which doctors never understood. A few days after her death, her sister woke up to a whistling sound and saw a creature crawling around her room with no face. The same night, her mom was ripped out of bed by someone. The father calls the police who come over, they search the house, they don't find anything, it's all quiet. As they're about to leave, they hear something. Horrifying screams coming out of the bedroom. They run inside, no one's in there, but there are these huge gashes on the wall that were not there before. The police get out of there. In the police report that was filed immediately after this house call, the chief inspector and the three officers that were there that night swear they saw and heard the same things as the family, which means the police officially believed that the house was haunted. This is why you should never live next to crazy people. In 2015, a girl who was totally fed up with her noisy neighbors finally worked up the courage to go over there and tell them to be quiet. She knocks on the door and out walks this insane looking old woman who just starts hissing at her. And she doesn't stop hissing at her until the girl finally just leaves. She considers calling the police, but ultimately just goes back to her room and goes to bed. But she wakes up a couple hours later when she hears that same hissing sound. Her first thought is there's no way this can be my neighbor because she had her door locked. But then she notices there's a big lump right next to her in her bed and she reaches over to check who it is. Her crazy neighbor leaps out of bed and runs into the closet. If you make it to the end, I'm sorry. In 2007, a woman was lying awake in her hotel bed when she started hearing a kid run up and down the hall laughing and making tons of noise. She considered going out and telling the kid to be quiet, but eventually just said whatever and fell asleep. The next morning she got up and asked her teenage daughter who was staying in the room next door if she had heard the kid, and she said yes, it was so annoying. That night, the woman is back in bed trying to sleep when once again she hears the kid in the hall. Now feeling pretty annoyed herself, she starts walking to the front door to get a better listen when the footsteps stop right in front of her door and she hears the kid playing with the do not disturb sign. She leans into the people to get a better look, but the kid's gone. So she steps into the hallway and looks down the hall and there's the kid at the far end, just standing there perfectly still. <laughs> if you ever find yourself in this situation, don't do what she did. In 2006, a group of cave divers decided they wanted to film a documentary in one of the most dangerous caves in the world. But only a few hours into their descent and a freak storm erupts on land, collapsing the entrance to the cave. In order to avoid the huge falling rocks that were coming off the ceiling, they were forced to swim through one of the uncharted sections of the cave. After they've been diving for over an hour, they luckily come across this island in the middle of a tunnel where they set up camp and wait to be rescued. After 48 hours and no sign of a rescue, the cameraman actually starts filming in case they don't make it out of there. At the same time, one of their crew members does something very stupid. This is why you should always watch what you say in public. In the late 1970s, a man began breaking into homes in order to assault the families inside of them. After dozens of attacks and no suspects in custody, the citizens were totally on edge, so the police decide to host this town hall meeting so they can discuss the situation out in public. During the meeting, a local man stands up and says, I would totally kick that guy's ass if he came anywhere near my wife. Then, in a crazy, ironic turn of events, that angry man and his wife become the next victims. Following their assault, the attacker completely changes his behavior. He goes from kind of petty home invader to full-blown serial killer, targeting 
only married men and their wives. When decades later, police finally identify Joseph D'Angelo as the killer, as they're going through old photos from the case, they make a startling discovery about his motives. D'Angelo had attended that town hall meeting. Moral of the story, don't sleep on the first floor. In 2014, a young woman woke up to strange noises coming from under her bed. When she finally worked up the courage to look, there was nothing there. The next morning when she got up, there were footprints leading right up to the sliding door that went right into her room. She instantly calls her dad, who comes over and traces the footsteps back to a house of a very troubled teen who admitted to spying on her. But he swore up and down he hadn't done that in weeks. They don't believe him and they threaten to call the police if they ever see him on the property again. That night, the girl's on her phone in bed when she starts to hear the strange sounds again. <coughs> Sometimes reality is stranger than fiction. In 2010, a couple renting a cabin in the middle of the woods finds the guest logbook tucked underneath the bed in the bedroom. After reading through it, they decide to call the cops. The final five entries are all by the same man. The first two are just talking about how great it is to be on vacation with his girlfriend. Then it starts to get weird. In the third entry, he describes a stranger lurking in the tree line that doesn't respond to his waves. In the fourth entry, he hears knocking on the windows in the middle of the night, but no one's there. In his fifth and final entry, his handwriting is barely legible, and it just says, it's in the bathroom, we're going to die. The police show up and find the girlfriend's body in the basement. Next to her body was her purse, and in her purse was her phone. When they open it up, they see that she texted her mother one last time, and it just says, Mike's starting to act crazy, I think he's off his meds again. I love how confident this guy was. In 1731, the King of Sweden was given an incredible gift. His very own lion, who he loved and totally spoiled. Unfortunately, it died young. After a couple of sad years, the king finally decides that he wants to memorialize the lion, so he sends its pelt and the bones to a world-renowned taxidermist. Now, unfortunately, the taxidermist that he sent it to had never actually seen a lion before, and it's 1731, so he can't just Google it. But he doesn't want to let the king down or jeopardize his reputation, so he's like, yeah, <laughs> send me its bones and belt. I'll whip you up a lion. <laughs> This is why you should never stay in sketchy motels. In 2005, a young woman on a solo road trip across the country decided to stop for the night. The first place she sees is the Mountaintop Motel. It looked pretty cheap, but she was tired, so she said, good enough. The check-in guy eyed her up and down very uncomfortably and then asked her if she was traveling alone. She ignores the question, pays for her room, and then walks away with the key. When she gets inside her room and sees there are literally cockroaches in her bed, she says nope and decides to sleep in her car in the parking lot. Around 3 a.m., she wakes up to see the check-in guy using his own keys to get into the motel room she was supposed to be in. A few minutes later, he storms out and slams the door and starts walking towards her car. Terrified, she hides under her blanket as the man tries to open her car doors but can't and walks away. She speeds off and calls her friend and asks her to look up the address of Mountaintop Motel so she can give it to police. Her friend's quiet for a second and then just says, the Mountaintop Motel closed a week ago. He looks at the foot of his bed and this huge, just wide, six foot tall black figure emerges in pure, it's bright in the room. This black figure emerges at the foot of his bed. It's got this huge tooth coming out of its mouth and it gets into this jerky position and starts moving towards Bill, and it gets right in front of him, and it puts its face right against Bill's. Remember, your Amazon Alexa is always listening. In 2018, a girl named Alexa came home to her apartment to find her creepy stalker landlord in her kitchen. She screams and threatens to call the cops, and he just smiles and says, I was just checking in on you, and leaves. Feeling totally sketched out, she spends the next few hours down the hall in her friend's apartment before finally going back to her room to go to bed. That night, she woke up to her Amazon Alexa responding to someone in the room. It said, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you say, I'm watching you? 
The girl instantly turns on her lights and looks around, but no one's there. So she unplugs Alexa and is about to go back to sleep when she hears what sounds like a man grunting in her closet. As she's staring at her closet, her Alexa turns back on. You only have about 13 minutes from the warning to the arrival of a tornado. Keep that in mind as you watch this. In 2017, a woman living in Oklahoma heard the eerie tornado siren going off outside her car and she started filming. Instead of stopping at a nearby shelter, she decides to gun it home because she's only 10 minutes away. But by the time she was about to turn onto her street, the sky had turned totally black and she started to panic that she wasn't going to get home in time. She finally makes it to her parking garage that's now totally pitch black and she starts running for her door and as she's running, she's filming. This is why you should always be scared of clowns. In 2004, a babysitter had just sat down to watch TV before the parents got back when she noticed something. In the corner of the room was a large clown statue that, no matter how she positioned herself, seemed like it was staring right at her. As she's looking at it, the father calls to check in on the kids. She tells him everything is fine, and right before they're about to hang up, she says, Why do you have a huge clown statue in your TV room? There was silence on the phone, and then the father just says, We don't own a clown statue. She immediately drops the phone, runs upstairs, gets the kids, runs outside, calls the cops. Cops go in and come out with this guy. As the police are taking the clown away, one of the officers comes over to the girl and with a very grim look on his face just says, we found him underneath one of the kids' beds. He was holding a sharpened screwdriver. This is why you should always sleep with your lights on. In 1991, a man named Christopher Case was found dead in his bathtub, fully clothed in the fetal position. When police interviewed his best friend, Sammy, she told them about a very disturbing phone call she got from him the night before he died. On the call, he told her that the previous night, he had woken up to what sounded like whispering coming from underneath his bed. When he went to look, he couldn't move. As he laid helplessly, he watched a black figure pull itself out from underneath his bed. Once it was fully upright, it reached down and began choking him until he passed out. The next morning when he came to, he felt his neck and it was swollen and bruised. And then he saw blood on his hands and he saw that there were deep uniform incisions on each of his fingertips. As he's saying all this to Sammy and telling her how scared he is to go to bed that night, he suddenly stops and he says, I hear whispering outside my room. Then the phone went dead. Let this be a reminder that there really are monsters out there. In 2007, a woman living right near a prison in California got home late one night and went right to bed. Around midnight, she woke up to footsteps on her first floor, assumed it was her roommate, so she goes downstairs to say hi. She yells out to her roommate, who doesn't say anything, and then in walks this giant man who she doesn't recognize. She runs upstairs, jumps in her closet into the crawl space, and hides. As she's helplessly tucked away in this little crawl space, trying not to make any sound, all she hears is this giant man sprinting around her house, running into walls, flipping furniture, and screaming in frustration because he can't find her. Finally, after several hours, she slowly opens the crawl space back up, crawls out, and gets her phone off the nightstand and calls police. As she's telling the police her story, she describes the person who had broken in and they stop her and say, ma'am, go back in the crawl space and stay there. We'll be there as soon as we can. It turned out a six foot 11 convicted murderer had escaped the prison and was still on the loose. If someone offers you this, walk away. In 2016, a man was staying at his friend's cabin in the woods when he decided to go for an evening stroll. A little ways down the trail, he hears someone call out from behind his neighbor's house. He looks up and he sees this skinny guy pop out from behind the building who starts waving frantically at him to come over. Worried this guy could be in trouble, the man takes off running to assist. But when he gets close enough, the neighbor just offers him a fistful of Slim Jims and starts talking about how much he hates his wife. Sensing there was something wrong with this guy, he says no thank you to the Slim Jims and walks away. The next day, the man calls his friend who owned the cabin to ask him what the deal was with his weirdo neighbor. There was silence on the phone, and then his friend just says, I don't have any neighbors. The police are called, and it turns out his neighbor was really some lunatic who had recently killed his wife and had been hiding out in the abandoned cabin next door. 
Unless you've heard this story, there's no way you could have guessed what was on that ship. In 2012, an old Russian cruise liner was being towed to the Caribbean to be used for scrap when the tow line snapped. They tried to recover it, but it drifted into international waters and everybody just kind of assumed it would sink. So they said, eh, forget about it. It didn't sink, because a year later they got a GPS signal from the unmanned ship showing that it had drifted nearly two-thirds of the way across the Atlantic and was now poised to strike the British coastline. At first, British authorities were not concerned with the damage this ship might cause to their coastline until scientists revealed what was on the ship. It was being towed to the Caribbean last year when it came loose during a storm. It's now feared to be infested with cannibal rats on board, who lacking a food source have turned on each other. Cannibal rats? That's pretty shocking. But not nearly as shocking as it was for me to see four million on my page. Thank you. This true story is so simple and so creepy. On June 21st, 2009, a 16-year-old wakes up to an empty house around 11 a.m. He heads downstairs, grabs a snack, and goes to the basement and plans on watching TV for the next few hours until he meets his friend around 3. About 30 minutes later, his mom comes downstairs and asks him, where have you been all day? Confused, he says, I've only been up for like 30 minutes. And then he looks at his phone and it's after seven o'clock at night. There's dozens of missed calls and several text messages from his friend and his mom asking, where are you? He tells his mom that none of this makes any sense, but what she tells him is even worse. She said that she was there all day and saw him go into the basement at 11. But after that, he was gone all day. So for one day in the summer of 2009, this kid didn't exist. Boy, did this kid pick a good night to have his phone out filming. In 2008, a teen decided he wanted to film himself playing the very creepy midnight game. In a nutshell, you turn off all the lights in your house and you walk around from midnight to 3.33 a.m. And if at any point you stop moving, the midnight man will attack you. Around 2 a.m., the kid thinks he hears something in the kitchen, but he also thinks his mind's just playing tricks on him because he is playing this game. But he goes to check it out anyways. When he gets downstairs, he doesn't hear anything, but he does see that his door is now open. And when he goes to shut it, someone pushes back. He sprints away, goes upstairs, jumps into his room, but keeps filming. This is why you always say yes to tandoori chicken. In 2012, a high school tutor and her student stayed up so late one night studying that by the time they were done, the buses had stopped running. Without another way home, the student asked if he could stay the night at her place. Reluctantly, she agreed. When they got back to the apartment, she fell asleep on her bed and he fell asleep on a blanket next to her bed on the ground. A few hours later, she wakes up to the boy standing awkwardly in the middle of the room with a very strange look on his face. She asks him, what's wrong? He looks at her and says, I'm really hungry. Let's go get some tandoori chicken. Confused, she says, it's 2 a.m. Just get a snack in the cupboard. And he grabs her by the arm and he says, no, we are getting tandoori chicken right now. And he yanks her from the bed. Feeling totally caught off guard by this whole situation, she goes into the hall with the boy, and as soon as the door shuts behind them, she can tell that he is terrified. He looks at her and just says, I'm not actually hungry. When I woke up, there was someone under your bed. This is why you should always keep your head on a swivel. In 2017, an elderly woman who lived alone thought she saw something moving in her backyard and went to the window to have a look. As she's looking around, a shadowy figure emerges right on the other side of the glass standing in her backyard. Terrified, she keeps an eye on the figure while calling police, but by the time she hangs up, the figure's gone. When the police arrive, her front door is unlocked, so they go inside and they find her still sitting in front of the window looking for this figure. The police search the backyard, but they don't find anything. When the police go back inside to search the house, they quickly find some large footprints that couldn't have been hers in the room that she was sitting in and all around the first floor. That's when they realized what was going on. She wasn't seeing a shadowy figure in her backyard. She was seeing the reflection of someone in the room with her. This is why you should always keep your head on a swivel. In 2017, an elderly woman who lived alone thought she saw something moving in her backyard and went to the window to have a look. As she's looking around, a shadowy figure emerges right on the other side of the glass standing in her backyard. Terrified, she keeps an eye on the figure while calling police, but by the time she hangs up, the figure's gone. 
When the police arrive, her front door is unlocked, so they go inside and they find her still sitting in front of the window looking for this figure. The police search the backyard, but they don't find anything. When the police go back inside to search the house, they quickly find some large footprints that couldn't have been hers in the room that she was sitting in and all around the first floor. That's when they realized what was going on. She wasn't seeing a shadowy figure in her backyard. She was seeing the reflection of someone in the room with her. This is why you should always be afraid of strangers. In 2014, a disturbing text message conversation between two classmates was uploaded to the internet. Annie and David are talking casually and then Annie hears footsteps outside and goes to look. She sees someone standing in her yard and she assumes it's just Dave playing a joke on her, but it's not. Suddenly the stranger starts sprinting towards her house. He smashes through a window and now he's in her house. She freaks out, jumps in a closet and tells Dave to call the police. She tells Dave that he's yelling for her to come out and then Annie stops texting. When Annie finally writes back that everything's just fine, Dave realizes something. He wasn't talking to Annie anymore. You're about to hear one of the most disturbing true stories on the internet. In 1921, a German farmer woke up to find a deep set of footprints leading from the forest right up to his back door. Whoever had come to his house had not left yet. After making sure it wasn't just his family, he searched everywhere on his property and his house everywhere, and he could not determine who made the prints or where they went. A few weeks later, his maid abruptly quits, saying that every time she's alone in the house, she hears demonic voices in the attic. Shortly thereafter, he and his family start to hear the voices too. When no one's heard from them in a couple days, the neighbors go over to check and they find them in the barn. One by one, each of the family members made their way down to the barn where they were systematically murdered and stacked in the corner. To this day, no one knows who or what is responsible for this crime. Believe it or not, this is a well-documented, true story. In 1947, an American ship picked up a horrifying distress signal coming from an unidentified vessel. The first transmission was all officers, including the captain, are dead. The next transmission was the whole crew is dead. The last transmission was I die, and then silence. The Americans trace the signal back to a ship that's drifting off in the middle of the Indian Ocean. They quickly assemble a rescue team who boards the ship. They find the entire crew has perished in the exact same position. They are on their backs with their hands up as if fighting with some unseen force, and they look like this. There was no physical damage to the bodies or to the ship itself. However, even though it was 100 degrees outside, it was 40 degrees on the ship, and the bodies were rapidly decomposing. As soon as they tie up the ship to tow it in, it explodes, and then it sinks. To this day, no one knows what happened inside of that ship. Some say it was a chemical leak, others aren't so sure. No one would believe this story if there wasn't a video. In 2013, a rogue wave capsized a tugboat killing 11 of 12 men on board. The 12th man was flung into the hallway which was already filled with water. Panicked, he starts swimming towards the exit but accidentally goes into the engine room where he finds an air pocket. And there this poor man sat listening to the sounds of these huge sharks fighting over the bodies of his friends just on the other side of the wall. Total darkness, no food or water 100 feet below the surface. Three days later, one of the divers that was sent down there to retrieve their bodies sees a hand. He's alive, he's alive. He's alive. Okay. All right. Harrison O'Keen survived the ordeal and plans on writing a book. I was going to do something scripted for this, but I'm just going to speak from the heart. I am crushed to find out that TikTok really is getting banned here in a matter of hours in the U.S. I, I never would have thought that, you know, six months ago when I posted my first scary story that it would have turned into what it has for me and my family. It's opened up more opportunities than I could have ever dreamed of. It's also given me a new purpose in life to create content for people. I love doing that. And TikTok's really been a great outlet for me. Leaving the military was hard. And honestly, content creation has been such a huge part of my, my new life here. So thank you all so much for giving me that opportunity. And I hope I'll see you on YouTube. I post all the time over there. My channel is Mr. Ballin. I also post on Instagram. My channel is uh, John Ballin, 416 on Instagram. So sad day, but I love all of you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And I hope to see you over on YouTube and Instagram. This is why you should always sprint up your stairs at night.
In 2018, a boy was up late gaming in his basement when he decided to go to bed. The basement's only light was controlled by a pull chain at the foot of the stairs, which meant after he pulled it, he'd be downstairs in darkness, so he would sprint up the stairs. Because everybody knows if you're not fast enough, this guy'll get you. So he did just that, and he made it upstairs safely when he realized he had forgotten his phone in the basement. So he took a deep breath and headed right back down. This is why you should be careful what you put in the mail. In 2015, a man was asked by his neighbor to collect his mail while he was gone for a few weeks. A few days later, a large package arrives on his neighbor's front porch. The man can barely lift it, but gets over to his garage where he accidentally drops it and hears something break inside. Hoping his neighbor would think the damage occurred en route, he closes his squeaky garage door and forgets about it. But over the next couple of days, whatever was in that package started to smell so bad that he decides to open it up. Inside were two very important finds, his neighbor, who was dead, and a camera that was still recording. The police bring the man in for questioning and show him what was on the camera inside the box. It starts with his neighbor talking to the camera about how excited he is to mail himself home for his YouTube channel. Then, police fast forward to the very end where they see that the neighbor is now sleeping in the box, and then suddenly gets dropped and you hear a crack, and that's his neck breaking. And then you hear a squeaky garage door close. This is why you should always watch videos to the end. In 2003, a woman came home to her apartment to see that her door was unlocked. She went inside, nothing was missing, so she assumed she must have left it open. When it happened a few more times, but still nothing was missing in her apartment, she went out and got a camera, set it up in her apartment, aimed at the front door. The next day, her door was unlocked, so she reviewed the footage. She watches in horror as late in the night, her front door opens and in walks this tall, creepy man who looks around and then walks towards her bedroom off camera. She immediately sprints out of her apartment and calls the police, who show up and tell her to go back in her apartment and just try to stay calm, and that they would put an officer right outside her door so she's safe. As she's sitting on the bed, totally traumatized, she realizes something. She only saw him enter her apartment on that video. She doesn't know if he actually left. As she's sitting there, she feels breathing on her ankles. She runs out, the cop comes in, and he finds the tall, creepy man under the bed holding a knife and a camera. Ever wonder what would happen if you stopped sleeping? During World War II, the Russians wanted to find a way to keep their soldiers awake longer. So they came up with this awful experiment where they took prisoners of war, put them in a gas chamber, and then exposed them to experimental drugs to see how long they could keep them awake for. Initially, the drug seemed great. The first four days, the subjects were agitated, but were normal. By day five, they stopped interacting with each other and began acting extremely paranoid. On day nine, one of the subjects screamed for so long that he tore his vocal cord. On day 14, they started eating themselves. When they turned off the gas on day 15, all of the subjects began screaming in pain, begging for them to turn the gas back on. When they didn't, they all fell asleep and died. This is why you should always trust your gut. In the 1970s, a young couple decided to go for a late night hike in the woods. A couple minutes into their walk and the man remembers thinking something's not right. He tells his girlfriend, but they just decide to ignore it and keep going until he steps on something that felt really soft, like it was alive. Before he has a chance to see what he stepped on, they hear all this rustling in the bushes next to them and they bolt. Years later, that couple turns on the TV and a death row inmate who's about to be executed is being interviewed. And they ask him, was there ever a time that you were almost caught red-handed? He responded, yes, one time. I was in the woods and a couple walked through and the man actually stepped on the body of a girl I had just killed. I was hiding in the bushes just a few feet away. They didn't see me. That couple had run into one of the worst serial killers of all time, Ted Bundy. This is why you never go to the well on your own. In 1983, a young boy was camping with his family on Roan Mountain in North Carolina when his mom asked him to head on down the path and get some water from the well. When the boy didn't return, his mom went to check on him and he was gone. A massive search party was launched to find him, but with temperatures rapidly dropping and finding no trace of him, the family braced for the worst. Then, miraculously, on the seventh day of the search, the boy shows up on the mountaintop in an area they had already searched, healthy and clean. When they asked the boy, where have you been? He said he had been at the well when a tall, faceless man showed up behind him, scooped him up, and brought him to the top of the mountain where he kept him in his cabin all week. 
After the boy gave a very detailed description of exactly where this cabin was on the mountain, the police were eager to go find it and confront this guy. But the park superintendent just raised his hand and said, guys, it's pointless. I've worked here 40 years. There are no cabins on Roan Mountain. This is why you shouldn't go for walks in Sweden. In 2008, a Swedish woman went out for an evening stroll with her dog, but never came back. Her husband went looking for her and found her dead next to a lake. The police immediately blamed her husband and sent him to jail. After a few months, the woman's forensic analysis report came back and it was clear the husband was innocent because there was all this hair and saliva on the woman's body that was not his. It turns out there is a very strange phenomenon that occurs in Sweden in the fall when all of the apples have fallen off of their trees. Those apples ferment and then hordes of moose eat those apples becoming drunk and oftentimes very belligerent like this drunk moose who got stuck in a tree. The hair and saliva of the killer belong to a drunk Swedish moose. Once you hear why he did this, it will change the way you look at strangers. In 2018, a woman was out for a walk in the blistering cold when she saw a teen girl coming towards her wearing just pajamas and oversized shoes. Turns out it was 13-year-old missing person Jamie Close, and boy did she have a terrifying story to tell. 87 days earlier, a man had broken into her home in the middle of the night, killed her parents, and then taken her prisoner. He brought her 70 miles away to his house where she was kept under a bed and largely forgotten about. She was just there for no apparent reason. When her captor left one night, she managed to escape and that's when she ran into this woman on the road. Jamie's captor, 21-year-old Jake Patterson, was quickly found and he immediately confessed. And this is why he did it. On his way to work one day, he stops behind a school bus and he sees a girl get on. He doesn't know anything about her. And he decides, I'm going to kill her family and I'm going to take her. He had no motive, he had no criminal history, this was truly random. This is why you should never watch my videos before going to bed. In 1986, a young girl opens her closet to find a man wearing a dress and holding an axe. He grabs her and ties her up, and then walks around the house and does the same thing to the rest of her family. While the guy is ransacking their house, one of the kids breaks free, runs next door, and tells his neighbor. The neighbor calls the cops, the cops show up, the family's saved, but the guy is nowhere to be found. The family leaves the house and stays with relatives in hopes that they'll catch this guy before they have to go back. But after a few weeks, they haven't caught him, there aren't any leads, and they say, you know what, we'll go back to our house anyways. As the family's pulling back into their driveway, the father looks up at one of the windows and sees for a split second the head of the man with the dress in their bedroom. They call the police who go in and find pennies glued to the ceiling and weird writing all over the house, but they can't find this crazy guy. Until one of the officers found a secret crawl space in the basement where psychotic killer Danny LaPlante had been living for two months. 